Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, I'm really excited to let you know that we finally got a permanent time slot in uh, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, we will be seen on your station. Unfortunately, I don't know uh, the number on your cable system, but it is uh, showing at Monday nights at 11.30. Anchorage is Thursday night, 11.30 at Channel 44, and then of course Olympia. Some of you can view us in um, on Channel 29, Thursday nights at 9, and some of you see us on Channel 22. So take your pick in all the time zones. We bid you hello. Um, I want to tell you a few things before we get going today. Um, well, actually, I'm going to introduce my guest first. Uh, it's Catherine Peels, your friend and mine. And this is, what, the third time you've been here, yes? It's always a pleasure. Yeah, the first, the first one that we did together, you actually narrated Root Awakening with Mona, the yes. schizophrenic show. Mm -hmm. And then you got to meet her as a, per it was as a person, where we learned about your childhood. And got to see that wonderful. Uh, oh, my Edison light, light bulb. bulb. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. We, we had some calls on that. And then, of course, we kind of did a show, and it was called um, Emotional Intelligence that lead up to what we want to do today. And, <laughs> excuse me, I still have my obstruction, so I'm coughing, like always. And um, just to remind you of that. Now, over the last few years, there was a gentleman, um, he lived downtown Olympia, and his name was Floyd Anderson. And I put that in the past tense because he passed away a few weeks ago. And I wanted to tell you something about Floyd. He was sort of um, a grumpy person. He didn't really like anyone. Um, he had a dog named Sam. First we thought it was a he, and then it turned out it was a she. And uh, and he had a wonderful garden. He grew zucchinis and things like that. And he took a liking to all of my grandchildren and um, in our family. So we sort of got acquainted with him really well. And uh, to, to the point where in the last, in the last few weeks, he, um, he overcame a lot of the anger and frustration that he had felt that was leftovers from an old belief system. And that's why I want to acknowledge him in this particular show. And he passed, um, he passed away. And when we collected all his things, this grumpy old man um, had a landscape my daughter painted for him. And clipped to this was a, a story. And I had asked you to be nice enough to, to read that. The author here is unknown, but I would like you to read that and in memory of Floyd I'd be happy Anderson. To. I'd be happy to. And you said this is his favorite poem? That's what we found. And we didn't really know anything about him. But this was real important and was taped to the landscape that we had given him. So he had a very beautiful heart. Oh. Mm -hmm. OK, so in the, honor of your mm -hmm. friend Floyd, mm -hmm. the Rainbow Bridge. There is a bridge connecting heaven and earth. It is called the Rainbow Bridge because of its many colors. Just this side of the Rainbow Bridge, there's a land of meadows, hills, and valleys with lush green grass. When a beloved pet dies, the pet goes to this place. There is always food and water and warm spring weather. The old and frail animals are young again. Those who are maimed are whole again. They all play all day with each other. There is only one thing missing. They are not there with their special person who loved them on earth. So each day they run and play until the day comes when one suddenly stops playing and looks up. The nose twitches, the ears go up, the eyes are staring, and this one suddenly runs from the group. You have been seen, and when you and your special friend meet, you take him or her in your arms and embrace. Your face is kissed again and again and again, and you look once more into the eyes of your trusting pet. Then you cross the rainbow bridge together never to, again to be separated. Isn't that wonderful? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's just beautiful. And so on Floyd's behalf, I'd like to um, thank all the friends that helped us find a loving home for Sam, the yes. dogs. Mm -hmm. 
and so safe journey, our friend. The next thing, Barbara McGuire, that you are very familiar with, I heard she was rather ill. I'm not sure where she lives at this time, but if you could send her some healing energy and some love and light, that would be appreciated also. So now we're going to um, talk about your phone call for a minute before we get going with our program here. Oh, okay, I, I thought that was interesting. The last time I was on your show, we, in fact, I think it was the Mona show, mm -hmm. um, the show where Mona, uh, who experiences what they call schizophrenia, and I came on to do a little tag at the end. Um, from my perspective as an emotion counselor and, and um, theorist with a completely different sort of take on human psychology that's much more toward the, the coming trend in positive psychology rather than the disease model, which mm -hmm. is sort of, sort of winding down. And um, a woman called me who had her, I believe she said her son had experienced some mental illness, perhaps manic depression, and there's many different categories that certain symptoms can be put in and sometimes they get shoved around between categories. Um, and she, she was very interested in what I had to say, mm -hmm. but she was, it was kind of charming because she also wanted to, she was like listening with one ear and she was willing to listen with both ears once she was sure, assured in her own mind that my credentials were worthy of her listening. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to know what my credentials were and I thought it was pretty funny because um, I actually have a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and uh, have done extensive research on my own above, above and beyond that because there simply weren't professionals in the field mm -hmm. with that, the kinds of authority and the kinds of perspective and, and vision, interdisciplinary um, research that I was interested in studying under. So uh, my little take home message about that is that any external credentials mm -hmm. are ways that we can inadvertently uh, invalidate our own power of choice by looking to someone who is a perceived authority in ways that actually limit us. Mm -hmm. And um, although I, I probably have a better credential than I'm willing to admit to, I really don't want anyone to evaluate anything I say by anything other than how the ideas fall out and, and work in their own lives. So. Uh, if, if that particular friend is watching today, it would, I, I encourage you to listen to the rest of what we have to say, and I'd love to discuss any of the issues that come up in terms of your emotional system and experiences people have had with manic depression or mm -hmm. schizophrenia, anything like that. Those are real extreme ends of natural human conditions rather than simply diseases that need to be addressed. Yeah. addressed. You, you see, one of the things is the name of the show is called A Visit, a visit. with a person of high strangeness. And what that means in essence that I run into people that um, is of interest to me or maybe to the friends and so they come and visit. And it's not unusual, they have doctors and people with PhDs and, and, and for a purpose, we don't put that on the show unless they actually request it because I find that when we relate to people on a one-on-one, -on, -one, on an equal personal basis, um, it changes the whole thing. You see what I mean? Because we are authorities on a lot of things and but sometimes we don't know everything. And I find when, when I travel and give lectures, just because you have a title or something attached to it, what you say is law and then people just want to follow you <laughs> and that's a responsibility I don't like to have. Yeah. Well I agree with that completely because uh, what I found is that there really is a, um, a beautiful egalita mm -hmm. egalitarian respect that is necessary for all human beings to be able to come up to each other and embrace whatever message they have to share and mm -hmm. we all know different stuff. That's we right. all have completely different perceptions and different experiences and different backgrounds. And uh, there are many, many people that I consider to be wonderful uh, authorities, mm -hmm. uh, some of which have excellent paper, some of which have had um, experiences in the world and have had specific genetic predispositions toward a mobile consciousness or toward disorders or something that have far more to offer me in helping me understand mm -hmm. the human condition. Than, than some of, of the other people with the more objective um, microscope sort of perspective. Mm -hmm. But everyone has something wonderful to offer and it's up to all of us to evaluate whatever information we get using our own internal guidance system. 
because every piece of information may or may not help us on our journey. That's right, and we have noises again, uh, just like always. I cannot identify this one. Sounds like we have somebody sweeping the roof, <laughs> which is not very Tell logical what, let's, either. Let's do, let's just pretend it's wind blowing through the trees oh, how wonderful. and, and what see a if, good idea. if it can give us energy in the, in the show. It's just great. What I like to do now, if you don't mind, um, I like to recap the example that you gave about the Microsoft um, little device that you have <laughs> in your pocket and okay. maybe that'll refresh their memory okay. as to how far we had gotten in this. Yeah. Well, what we're talking about is um, the discovery of the emotional sense, mm -hmm. is that we have this fabulous guidance system, an entire sensory network that we've had uh, ever since we were reptiles and on up the, the scale, that we're not aware of as a guidance system. Mm -hmm. Every feeling that we experience in every moment of every day is a specific message from our body to our mind. And if you want to say it's also from our spirit, which is housed in our body, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes a very, very important voice to attune to. Unfortunately, we have not recognized that it is a sense. And just like if we were blind or deaf, or we, we've been handicapped severely by not recognizing that these are specific corrective and guiding signals. So uh, it's, it's difficult for me as one of, one of the first researchers to have the paradigm that makes sense of all of the different research that's out there, uh, sort of recognizing it what this is, mm -hmm. uh, when most, most people um, think of emotion as something that's left over from our animal vestiges and we're supposed to behave in ways that don't show our feelings, we don't express them, we're not even supposed to experience them. So it's, it's difficult to shift everybody's thinking on something that's such a familiar process, yet that a lot of, we've been trained from a very early age to not even be aware of our feelings, let alone aware of the a tremendous amount of information it, that they carry, let alone has anyone taught us how to decode those feelings to know what they're telling us and how to obtain this wonderful inner guidance that we are born with and is our birthright. I, if I remember correctly, I think the, uh, what you compared it to was a little, like a little oh. <laughs> computer in your pocket. They'll give yes. you a buzzer every time that there is a reason for you to reevaluate what you're saying. Exactly. And yeah. so, so you just sort of an instant update here. I called it a little palm pilot. And That's there what was it was, a, yeah. Uh, it, only this is something that, that would be coming out on the market in a million years mm -hmm. from now, and it was something so incredibly advanced, a computer system that had all of your own personal information mm -hmm. uh, from your highest, highest levels of consciousness, whatever that's your soul, your spirit, um, God, knew everything about you, what your journey was, what your potentials were, and exactly what you were supposed to do in every moment to be able to get there. All that information is in this little database and you keep it in your pocket and you're going about your business every day and as soon as you do something that's that's a misuse of your conscious free will, mm -hmm. if you, as soon as you make a choice, take a step, make a decision that goes against your highest and best purposes, a little beep goes off mm -hmm. on your little machine and oh, 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 I gotta fix something. So you pull it out and across it is the reader board that's telling you exactly how you're thinking and how you're acting that needs to be changed to get mm -hmm. back on your highest path. And so since we've had this thing going off in her pocket forever and mm -hmm. ever and ever, we don't recognize that what it is. We keep, you know, make it go away, make it, give me medication, make these feelings That's go right, away. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a really profound misuse of this internal guidance system that we have. And uh, so what my work and my life pretty much is about is in, is in helping people rediscover what this is, mm -hmm. and to be able to, every time they feel a feeling experience, be able to mentally pull this palm pilot out of their pocket and read that message that's specifically tailored to them about their highest purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the very, very minimum, I want everybody to know that um, feelings are probably one of the most important sensory experiences that we have, and that uh, negative feelings are protective. They are painful signals that are protecting boundaries that are being breached. And positive emotions are growth emotions. They're about self-development, that mm -hmm. it's pulling us to become consciously aware of those paths, those activities, and those interests that are going to give us our highest amount of purposeful, value fulfillment in life that mm -hmm. teaches us whatever we need to teach that allows us 
to give our highest gifts to the physical experience. Now, early in the week, we had a conversation. I had one of my little crises, which just really, in the long run, doesn't mean anything, but it's a crisis nevertheless. Um, one of the things we were discussing, um, and you pointed out that it's all systems, they are connected. And would, would you like to explain that? Okay. Well, when I talk about emotion as a sensory network, mm -hmm. I'm talking about that it is intertwined throughout your nervous system, your immune system, your um, audio, uh, well, let's see, it's, there's just, it's every system involved in your body, mm -hmm. and that there are chemical manifestations of it, electrical manifestations of every pain signal, and that there's this huge combination between, uh, this huge connection between how you're feeling, how you're dealing with that emotion, and how your bodily uh, health the state of your spiritual existence or whatever. A fiber optic, uh, what is it, a fiber, fiber optic cable, you, you know, like the, up, oh. uh, the upgrading all the systems, the regular cable system making it fiber optic now so you can have more stuff coming your way, that's what you mean? <laughs> that's an interesting way of thinking about it because before we were talking about since all these systems are connected, mm -hmm. it, is, it is sort of the unifying system that helps us make sense of the external sensory perceptions that we have. So you see this about the world, that you know this is going on, you hear this, you taste this, but the emotional is like an inner sense that really is throughout every one of uh, your bodily systems that tells you how all this external perceptions, everything that happens in the world, how it relates to you and your specific purposes. And in scientific circles, we call it a self-regulation system because it, is, it regulates your thought and action. And if you're not aware that it's going on, it's going on at an automatic level that's going to give you protection, but it's not going to allow you to exploit the benefits of the positive growth aspects mm -hmm. of the system. So if we remain unaware of the little thing in our pocket that's going on, we're really stuck at a lower level of consciousness and a low, lower level of evolution. We're going to be feeling a lot of fear, a lot of anger, and a lot of confusion. We're not going to be able to make the connections between our thoughts, our actions, and our feelings, and the corrections that our body's making for us. So it, we're going to be sort of stuck at this basic level of mm -hmm. existence that's very painful and it's uh, we're not involved in it nearly as consciously as we ought to be and so therefore we don't have as much purposeful experience or conscious uh, participation in what's going on in fact what's even worse than that if if we continually deny the feelings and we we learn to think in ways that uh, go against what our body is telling us, then we can actually go below the protective level and get into what I call self-destruction because you have self-preservation at this base level and then you have self-development. Mm -hmm. It's all about self-regulation. So humans, at the, which is where we are for the most part, since we're not aware of this, we've messed up. We're not only are we missing out on the really good stuff, we've messed up the automatic process and, and we're, we're in levels of emotion more like hate and resentment and retaliation and that are only human. We've actually learned new emotional feelings because our belief structures are so going That's against right, our, yeah. our nature. So no wonder we have a disease model out there and we look That's at everything right, as if yeah. it's a disease. Could I get you to define intelligence? Yes. Um, normally the, the concept of intelligence is, is how well the intellectual brain processing works, how logical your mind is, how, how much information you can pull together and synthesize and come up with an output. And there is a range of human potential that you're pretty much born with your genetic mm -hmm. potential, but that if you are raised um, with a lot of stimulation and a lot of good education, you're going to maximize whatever your intellectual potential is. And then there's tests like IQ tests that measure the logical linear processing mm -hmm. and all of that. But what now, I guess over the past decade or so, people are talking about different kinds of intelligences that aren't being measured on these tests and they're maybe figuring out a little bit why some, of, some kids are not working well in some of the, the standard tests and yet they're doing really well in a more creative ways. Yeah, well, you know, the average person when you talk about intelligence, they think it has to do with smarts. 
Now I know professors that are brilliant, <laughs> but when it comes to logical intelligence in everyday life, they need a lot of help. Okay, <laughs> now, you're, now you're talking, you're mixing logical intelligence with more of an everyday common sense intelligence. Yeah, now but that's what we're getting toward here with emotional intelligence. Right, yeah, because um, when, when you ask about intelligence, the average person, that's what they think of, oh, this person is smart, and that's why. Well, sometimes they think mm -hmm. this person is knowledgeable. Sometimes knowledge is mixed up with, mm -hmm. with intelligence as well. But emotional intelligence is, is sort of one of this new area of they're recognizing all way, there's a whole lot more to it than being able to solve those funny little puzzles that Marilyn Vos Savant does so well. Mm -hmm. there's, there's this street smarts. There's this way of dealing with people in, in, on, a, on an emotional level that, that really is a, a, more, a kind of intelligence that hasn't been considered or hasn't been measured. So I think the coin, the, when I first heard the term, was about 10 years ago, and in 1994, a book came out by Daniel Goleman, I think I have it here, called Emotional Intelligence, and the concept of EQ, which, which is right. your level of um, emotional intelligence rather than your IQ, sort of was, got a lot of press, and it was, it was um, mm -hmm. finally out there that there's something good about emotion. Well, now it's, it's, we're really ready to make this leap and say it is an entire sensory system. And the beautiful thing about emotional intelligence is anybody can have it. It's a simple measure. If you're listening to that thing and you're responding to it, then you automatically get emotional intelligence. We're supposed to develop emotional intelligence mm -hmm. naturally by listening to our feeling signals. And what I want to share with you at these two shows is how to do that. Well, yeah, this might be a good time to let the friends know because this is a little complicated. Um, chances are, um, that this is going to be a two-part show. And uh, I guess we'll let you know at the, at the end of this show whether we're going to need to make this a two-part or not. Now, back to the IQ and the EQ. Uh, so one versus the other, should it be in either or, or you need to combine the two? Oh, you definitely have to have both. The human form is designed, we have this wonderful rational capability of processing, gathering information through our senses, and then having the brain process them and spitting out an output. It's just like a computer. Okay, so uh, yeah, but very, it's all lot, it's, it's based on everything that's in there. There's no just like if you put it, everything into a computer, it takes everything into consideration and comes to the best conclusion. But what emotional intelligence is is how to sift out mm -hmm. the stuff that's in your computer banks, how to choose what should go in and what should come out. There's a computer in and of itself does not have any ability to judge its own contents. Garbage in produces garbage out. So yeah, that's very true. In fact, sometimes I, I explain that to uh, to people when they're very fearful about something, where they can be, um, where they can compare themselves to the actual hard drive in the operator at the same time. And exactly. Then, right, and then because you're also the operator, if one of your files is not acceptable or scary to you, you can either, before you can close it, rename it, delete it, or do something That's else. That's exactly the point, because if you have a fear signal, yeah. it is your emotional sense saying, Bad software, bad software, yeah, just fix it. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's the only, in fact, we talked a little bit about this before, about the religious metaphor of mm -hmm. human tree of knowledge, biting of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We do not have the ability to judge. The intellect alone cannot judge. We need to have the emotional system mm -hmm. to be the ultimate evaluator. And that is a huge upside down concept compared to how the world thinks about feeling. We say that uh, that judgment is, I mean, we hire people to be judges, and uh, but what we're really talking about is decision making, information processing and decision making. The evaluation has to come from emotion. And that's one of the scourges of humanity that I'm hoping to be able to have a small voice in, in having people rethink. Excuse me, you're teaching, um you're teaching seminars now, I understand? Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I um, am actually a researcher and a theorist. And um, I was frustrated that there wasn't enough progress being made in the scientific community and went out on my own and conducted my own research and wanted to be able to share the information in any way, in any form that I could. So I did put together this seminar booklet which is actually very useful, I think. Uh, it's a synthesis yeah, of. can hold it up. Here. It's a synthesis of um, everything that's already out there that's been tested and proven mm -hmm. within what I call the homeostatic feedback model, which is what we're really talking about today, the emotional feedback system. 
which is basically a, um, a model that pulls all the information together and, and exposes emotion as a sense. So my plan was to sort of take this information directly to the people. But in the course of doing this, um, I've, I've, there, there have been a lot of scientific strides been made, mm -hmm. and um, people are suddenly quite interested in what I have to say now. So um, I have been invited to go and participate in some um, actual testing of the models in the academic community. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure how much more of that I'm going to be doing. Um, so everything's sort of up in the air about it. But I, I do have these available for anyone that's interested, and I, and I do sort of one-on-one -on -one work as well. Okay, so how about um, we covered a lot in the other show that we did um, where we picked it apart and put it back together. So and the name of the show today is Emotional Feedback and we, we sort of tapped into what it is. And in your section two here, it says the Emotional Feedback System and Personal Development. Do you want to pick it up from there for a little okay. bit? Okay. Okay, so we have this idea in place that we have a sensory system that brings us information about the relationship to ourself and our highest purposes and what's going on in the world. So how, how it actually works and how we can use it in our life is, is in recognizing that it is, it's a cycle of information that's flowing between the body and the mind and it's giving trying to shed our consciousness on the fact that we have, every time we have make an action, a choice of some kind, there is an outcome. And th so there's this cycle, what I call the human feedback cycle, that starts with, let's see, it's probably on a better page to look at might be. Yeah, I didn't have a particular page. Um, if, when you got through, I wanted to show the friends how. Mm -hmm how you broke that down almost in, 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 in small, almost cartoon-like <laughs> things so we can understand it. So I yeah, just thought I'd stick it here. It, this is actually um, a self-contained sort of self-help mm -hmm. piece of work that pulls everything together quite nicely, I think, and there's a lot of information in there. But, but a key concept in understanding the feeling system is what, um, what I call the feedback cycle, of uh, the action cycle. It starts with a motive, which means your mind has a plan, and your body has a need. And all of those things go together to motivate you into doing something. OK, so that's the first thing that happens in the action cycle. The second thing that happens is that you, you act on that motive. You behave. You, you do something. You make something happen. The third thing that happens is the outcome. So if you, you have a motivation, you act on the world, then there's a change that occurs in the world. I call that the outcome. Then the fourth thing that happens and this is where, this is the really important step that we're learning about, is then the feeling comes. And the feeling comes so quickly that sometimes it feels like it's at the same time as the outcome. Sometimes it's even before the outcome. It's all tangled in there together. But if we recognize that the order is action, outcome, feeling, then oh, it oh. makes us understand mm -hmm. yeah. that the feeling is riding the coattail of the outcome to tell you how well it served your purposes. And then there's a fifth step, because since it, since it has an automatic mm -hmm. feature to it, I mean, whoever designed this human form or evolution, creation, whatever, it is a beautiful system. Because if we are misusing, if we do something that's not good for us, not only does the feeling tell us through pain or pleasure how good or bad it was for our purposes, but that feeling comes with automatic arousal to make a change, another mm -hmm. change, which I call step five, the correction. So if we're not aware of it, the feeling itself will motivate us, if it's a positive feeling, to make that thing happen again, mm -hmm. which I call the approach response, which is the positive pole of the spectrum that promotes growth and self-development. Or there's the negative pole that's painful that makes us fight or flight. Okay, that's the makes us either want to hide or run away to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if we are not aware that the feeling is telling us all of this information, the body's going to go ahead and try to correct it on its own. Yeah, and so, so, so if you hear that, uh-oh. Exactly. Well, yeah. first of all, you need to be aware of the fact that um, if you're not aware of that your feelings are giving you information you're supposed to consciously mm -hmm. act on, then you'll, you'll understand, you'll start understanding why you feel 
a compulsive urges to do this or that. And this is the source of all addiction. It's the source of denial. It's the source of deception. It's the source of revenge. All of those acts that we consider evil are simply these natural protective responses mm -hmm. of the body the mind hasn't clued into. So we're sort of like at a stage of our evolution where we're half animal and half human because we're only consciously aware of how our body and mind are regulating us through emotion. Now, we've been talking about DNA on these shows for quite some time. And here, we very recently, they uh, released, the, they did D DNA mapping. Yes. And they, I saw it on television. And so one of the first things we talked about was, you know, we, strange people, we get we look <laughs> better every day now, you see. But one of the things I thought was interesting, um, on one of the news channels, they said that there is such a... Um, like it said, if you break it down by DNA, we were 80% chicken, 90% <laughs> cow. That's and right. I thought, whoa. Oh, we're like 93% chimpanzee, 97%, something like that. That's right, yeah. just like that. So, yeah. you know, when you look at it like that, it's kind of food for thought. Well, we're, we're fixed mm -hmm. in a certain way. And you'll notice that there's different levels of consciousness from the amoeba all the way up to the human mm -hmm. being. And the, the higher you go on the scale, the more conscious will volition is involved in our behavior. So we have the ability to run on complete automatic pilot with our emotional system, mm -hmm. or we have the even higher ability to consciously participate and help it along. That's what my work is about, is helping us con consciously participate because we're being pulled in specific directions. And if, if we just figure it out and go there ourselves by choice, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna be a lot happier, a lot healthier, a lot more uh, personally satisfied. And you, you're quite literally on a different level of consciousness. Um, are you familiar at all? Oh. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, I just started reading a book that's been big on the Oprah show lately. She has a guy by the name of Gary Zukav come mm -hmm. on a lot. And his work is, he actually came out with this in 1989, and I'm mm -hmm. just now reading, I'm not even finished with it yet. But he, um, he is really talking about this very stuff without the piece um, that I'm talking about today about how emotion is actually a sensory network that's making all this happen. And, and I would highly recommend that mm -hmm. if, if you're interested in this sort of thing at all. It gives a really good background. Um, and it's amazing how uh, some of these same concepts are, are popping up here and there and all over the time is really right for us to do this. Yeah, well, that, that's sort of where I was going with this a while ago. It used to be, in, unless, this, unless this was of total interest to you, uh, but now it's getting to be so mainstream, and so I'm glad we, we got back to it. It's so mainstream that instead of getting up and going to work, um, people listen to tapes, they hear it in the media, and so are strange people. We start to look, <laughs> that's what I meant by, we start to look pretty Sometime good Sometimes that strangeness pays mm -hmm. off, yes, and, 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 uh, and that's so, nice. So we do have, uh, we've come a long ways. We have come a long mm -hmm. ways, but we have a long way to go. And what I'm real excited about is there, the implications of the emotional system are so profound that when we get figured out how to use it, we can really uh, have this wonderful, rapid state of advancement. Um, we we're talking about punctuated equilibrium, how evolution goes along, stable for a long time, and then suddenly there's a flurry of activity. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern. And we're, we're really ready for a flurry of activity where our consciousness can really be enhanced mm -hmm. just by reclaiming what we lost a long time ago in our emotional sense. So what I'm, what I'm saying about this human action cycle is that I, I want everybody to burn this into your mind and just make it a mantra of uh, motive, action, outcome, evaluation, correction, those five steps. You're going through these uh, cycles constantly every day. And if you, if, when you feel this signal, the feeling going off, you recognize, oh, I'm, I'm at the evaluation stage right now. Then you start, what you're supposed to do is to work back through the, the thing, okay, I'm feeling this, it was either good or bad, now what was the outcome that made me feel that way? And then, okay, what did I do to make that happen? Okay, what did I think? What was I motivated? So, so you learn to connect all of these things together and you not only do you learn about actions that were unconscious, that were pushed by your mm -hmm. corrective system, such as the revenge and, and all of those bad things we don't want to keep doing, but that you recognize these patterns and you change the belief structures at the very beginning of the change of the chain of action. So emotion is actually teaching us how to act 
and how to think in ways that bring positive emotion over the long run instead of just short-term pleasure to get away from long-term pain. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you something here. Like some of the, some of the friends, they probably going to say, now, how does karma fit into that? <laughs> in fact, that's one of the reasons that I brought up the Gary Zukov book because he goes into um, all way all the way into karma and uh, really out there ideas about how spiritual um, how we're actually here on the planet to heal the soul and that the personality that is Lillian or the personality that is Catherine is is just but a very very small piece of our spirit mm -hmm. and that um, every one of your emotional impulses, and I'm throwing my stuff in here too, mm -hmm. is guiding you from your highest sense of self, from your spirit that has all the information about what you're here to do, through your feeling signals. So ultimately, now I wouldn't want to scare anybody, but I think it's incredibly important to respond to every emotional signal that you can, mm -hmm. understand it, and claim conscious control over your own participation in your self-regulation system. When you do, you start to experience an, an incredibly different kind of a life. And so not, you have personal pleasure as, as one benefit, but there's an, a much bigger benefit according to Gary Zukov because he talks about how um, if you don't learn and, and, and manage to manifest what your spirit is asking you to, then you create uh, negative karma for yourself. So to the degree that you have, now again, I'm putting my stuff in here, painful emotion in your life, you have stuff that has yet to be dealt with. And it's not going to go away just if you pass over the rainbow bridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I hear some of my stuff. How's that? <laughs> What? I'm going to put some of my stuff okay. in here. I don't know. I don't even know if it fits, but I'm supposed to do this. Now, there is a difference between automatic pilot and cruise control. Yes. Okay. Now, I know when you put a car on cruise control, it does almost all the things automatic pilot does, but you still can... You have chosen. You have chosen. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um, do you really want everybody to go on automatic pilot or... Do they still have the option to put on the bike if they so choose? Okay. Well, you always have the option. The, the, the idea of, in fact, I'd like to use a different terminology if I could. There's a, there's a little chart in here that I talk about. Oh, you can see I'm revising. An alligator. Okay. When I've got here an EQ scale that shows um, a 1 to 10, and there's the low end where we're really, really messing up, where we, we're not using it at all. In fact, we're worse, lower than animals, all the way up here at 10. And down here, it's called, uh, let's say at a four, we're automatically on pilot. Okay, we, we just talked mm -hmm. about automatic pilot. When I, I call this unconscious competence. That's when we're doing okay, but we're not aware why. Ah, so not okay? aware. Okay, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, the higher we go up the EQ scale, it's about becoming consciously competent okay so when we start listening to our fe feeling signals we're not only in exploiting the stuff that's already innate within us but we're saying aha I get what's happening I'm gonna help it out so I'm gonna follow these signals and I'm gonna use my consciousness to even enhance it so the higher up here you go pretty soon you get up to the very top that I call spontaneous competence now what you're talking about contrasting automatic pilot and cruise control I'm saying Spontaneous competence is that you have the belief structures, the attitudes, the strategies, and the behaviors that are going to give you the most successful outcomes and the highest feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. And since they're there, you can be totally spontaneous because you're prepared to do so. And you're going to, it's like whether you need to put on the brake or whether you want to adjust something, mm -hmm. it's all there because you've shaped your mind the way your feelings have asked you to. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have what's called unconscious incompetence and that's what happens when we go below our animal autopilot regulation where the mind puts in bad software not only doesn't it put in good creative enhancements it puts in bad stuff like how we can learn to hate other people we can mm -hmm. learn to become addicted to um, deviant sexuality or to this or that and we can feel emotionally that that's something that we want that that's a perversion of the system Mm -hmm. So when you talk about autopilot, and it, it, it really is about evolving our consciousness mm -hmm. and our conscious participation in processes that are already occurring. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, actually it did. Uh, it, uh, you know, the f I used this example about Jonah. I call it my Jonah and the whale syndrome. 
simply because in America, and in case you hadn't noticed, I have an accent, I'm not from here. <laughs> um, everything has to be, in order to be acceptable, it has to be a syndrome or a disorder, <laughs> okay? And so, having said that, it's, um, my Jonah and Wales and was, I just knew where I was going and then I thought I knew where I was going. Then I got swallowed up like, the, <laughs> like that story, you know, and I floated around aimlessly for 26 years. Now, I did all the things you do inside of a whale, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> whatever that is. And then when it, and I was able to, fu able to function like that. But then it, when it deposited me or regurgitated me wherever I needed to be, um, it became a different story. And I said, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> but in the end, it turned out the 26 years of being in that belly, I needed that once I got over here. You see, you're, that's a beautiful um, way of explaining what happens to all of us in mm -hmm. life because we really do have with our conscious ability to use our mind, the ability to perceive any situation any way we want to. And in that way, we literally create our own reality. So if with this concept of intention, um, the emotional system is giving us a quality control mechanism to make sure that we are consciously involved in our intention. Mm -hmm. And so we are intending and creating and living in our highest purposes. So when you're talking about the belly of the whale, it sounds like, if, you, if, we have, if we are not aware of our processes that are going on, right. these signals That's are constantly I mean. going off, mm -hmm. we're not making the corrective changes that they're asking, then we develop a whole lot more unconscious mm -hmm. intentions than conscious intentions. So our motivations that are leading to our actions, that are creating the outcomes, that are bringing us the painful evaluation, saying fix it, fix it, fix it, are um, overpowering us and we are literally unconsciously Swallowed. incompetent yeah. <laughs> and yet we're so confused that's why um, s s huge events can come along in our life and surprise us nothing should really be that surprising because we are creating tomorrow today and yesterday and and it should be pretty obvious what's happening but we have so much of this unconscious intention and that's the whole idea of this is to teach mm -hmm. us to become aware of what we're creating how we're creating it and that this beautiful system is saying, stop creating so much garbage in your life, you're wasting your ability. So what the whole idea of emotional feedback is, is to get in touch with the rhythm of the five steps of the, motion, of the motive, the action, the outcome. Because the difference here is that the outcome is, a, is um, a function of the intellect. So that's when you have that intelligence that we're talking about. It's sort of a left brain function where the computer spits out, okay, you, you got, you, in came the sensory information. I saw this, I tasted this, I right. felt this, and this is what it means. This is the outcome I have perceived in my mind. Then you have this beautiful quality controller that comes along and says, okay, so you created that, was it good or bad? And this is the only way we can mm -hmm. evaluate and judge our experience. A judgment is not an outcome. In fact, if we perceive an outcome, there, there, the emotional system, if you, look, if you get in touch with this, these five steps, your issues, your problems, and the suggestions are going to be apparent in mm -hmm. every one of the steps. So if you're having impulse issues, you're feeling compulsive urges to drink or to eat or to shop or anything that you don't consciously like doing, but that you just have to do it in the moment because you just don't have the kind of willpower to not do it. Those are all messages about how emotion has been driving you to build these unconscious mm -hmm. intentions and you can unpack them by watching. You can work back through the cycle at any step in the, in the stage and figure out all the way back to your motives what's mm -hmm. going on. And ultimately, you want to design motives that are going to give you this flow all the way through so that the correction that you're doing is a conscious one where you're learning and adapting mm -hmm. your motives instead of letting your body just run away or fight. Age groups. Now, with the young, with the young people being as, oh, so what should we call it, advanced? They, they just on a different, on, they're on a different frequency. They're on a different speed. They're in a totally different space and they all know how to work with computers. Mm -hmm. So if, um, in order to understand it, do you have to be uh, fully grown or can <laughs> we translate it into something where the children can understand it as they go along so they don't have to well, go to the belly of the whale and then the real beauty will, later. The real beauty will be 
probably 10 to 20 generations from now, I hate to say, mm -hmm. when the society is really understanding this and has embraced it in the educational systems and the social systems, so we aren't undoing it from mm -hmm. birth because the emotional system has to, has to evolve. In fact, the second um, issue is how this works and how it affects your mm -hmm. development is that if we are attuned to the emotional sense from day one, that means our parents are doing certain things and allowing us to experience the world through mm -hmm. this action cycle. Yeah, um, that's the whole thing, allowing us. It, allowing mm -hmm. us. It really yeah. is about understanding that every child learns through hands-on experience, mm -hmm. through trial and error experience. You can't learn really any other way. I mean, I can tell you things, but I, you can choose whether or not to take them in. Mm -hmm. And you will never really embrace it emotionally until you experience the emotion of the good or bad result of whatever I'm telling you is true. Yeah, we just had a perfect example that uh, some of uh, you are familiar with Monica Ryan Smith, and you're also familiar with Greenville, Illinois. And uh, Monica had set out to go to Wisconsin and decided to stop in Greenville, Illinois, to visit some of the friends and visit someone in, in the penitentiary. And that was a new experience for her, so I had prepared her what to expect. Uh, but when she got there, it, it was one thing I forgot to tell her about, and and it became, it was such a resistance. It's like she kept running into this brick wall, and of course, she called me, and then I fed on this, and so on and so on. And I think the reason for that was so she could experience what I had been trying to tell her. So hands-on is so very important. It's it's really the only way that we we learn. Any, any educational or parenting device that helps you emotionally experience something through someone else's experience, like through stories and movies, those are very effective teaching mm -hmm. tools. But the, the whole idea of, of learning naturally and having your emotional system engaged really does have, have to start from day one. Mm -hmm. And if you see, since we were programmed to attune to this system, it's working in us whether we're aware of it or not. Everything we do, we, ex we expect there to be a change on the environment, an outcome, evaluation, correction. So if a child cries and, uh, because it's hungry and then the mother comes, then it makes that connection that, oh, when I cry, mother will come, I will feel good again. So this, every, every experience, every little interaction is either building um, positive attunement with the emotional system or um, frustration of it. For example, if, if, if a mother is neglectful or you know, the baby cries or for some reason they think, well, crying is good for the soul, you must suffer mm -hmm. for a while, then, then all of this confuses the child's emotional system. So um, most of us are a, a wonderful mixture of good ideas about ourself mm -hmm. and not so good ideas about ourself, and each one is signaled by wh how much pleasure or how much pain we experience in our life. Um, look at the difference at the choices people could make if this like you said, in, in maybe in a few hundred years or so. Hopefully sooner than that, but I'm, I'm thinking realistically here. Yeah, it would, it would save so much trauma. Oh. And you could, it would be um, a completely different world. It would be, see, it because would be. before we know anything, you know, it's like once you learn something, you can't really go back. Once you learn it, you know it. Well, you kind of can, but you're right. See, the, um, our learning system is incorporated into the very fiber of our cells. Mm -hmm. So if you learn a fear response, it will always be with you to some degree. But if you understand that fear is a signal that's teaching you about this and that, it becomes far easier to um, undo that emotional, um, that mm -hmm. hardwired reflexive correction and replace it with a perspective that you have chosen. And what, what, what I ha have in here is that as if you are allowed to go through the natural process with mm -hmm. nobody thwarting your emotional development, you actually achieve um, the maximized uh, intelligence, whatever your normal All IQ right. is going to be, you're going to get the height out of that, you're going to have the high EQ. Not only that, you are going to have um, Na the highest kind of natural morality mm -hmm. because your emotional system is connected with everyone else's and what makes you feel good makes other people feel good, what makes you feel bad makes mm -hmm. other people feel bad and that becomes a universal value system that prevents us from falling into these automatic behaviors of fighting and competing and um, it, it's we're really designed to have a completely different kind of world than what we have because we're still stuck in this mm -hmm. unconscious state. Exactly, and I'm going to finish the sentence. It's, isn't it wonderful how we start over here and then we double back this way? Um, when we don't know these things, we exist. And so because you, you, once you learn something, you can't go back. 
And so then when you reach this point and you learn this, then you can live and really enjoy your life. Yes. Because who would want to go back the other way, you know? Oh, it's no. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, the, the, really, the, in any minute that you start recognizing the power of your feeling system and what it's telling you to do, and the, if you get on top of the impulses, because remember, there's an automatic, I, I talked about the right track mm -hmm. and the wrong track. Um, every time we allow impulse to take our consciousness instead of um, purposefully learning from the negative emotion and changing whatever needs to be changed either in ourself or in our world, if we fall into the patterns of uh, what I call them the deadly impulses, and if you'll notice that every one of them is um, what we call sin or uh, they're undesirable behaviors, and all they are is the impulses of fight and flight or the approach impulses if, if we're compelled to drink or, or something like that. And when you recognize this is your body crying out to, mm -hmm. to get rid of pain that you're not taking care of in, in, in the moment, that when the mind consciously gets strategies and perspectives that work over a long period of time, you end up having a completely different kind of life experience. It's far more emotionally rewarding. You're not creating all that pain all the time. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's not as much static that your, your perceptual abilities become far broader and your consciousness literally expands. So there's lots of, lots of promise and lots of hope for the species, I think. What do you think is ahead for you? Would you, um, you have all this knowledge and it's great how you figured all this out and it's really kind of simple when you look at it. It, it's really kind of simple. It really it, is. It really is. So do you intend to teach it to the masses or you think one person at a time? Or <laughs> what would you like to happen here well, at what, this point in time? What I really want to have happen is, and, and I think about it over the course of my entire lifetime, and whatever, whatever happens at this point in time that could make the broadest, um, for me to be able to share this information with the biggest audience possible is, is my goal. And um, I am a scientist, despite the fact that I put a caution on, on having mm -hmm. too much authority, because there are many scientists who are even afraid to look at this as mm -hmm. what it is, because it sounds like it's too religious, and their, their, their field is so narrow that it's it, they're limiting their own options. And yeah. there's negativity and emotional stuff that goes with it, and, and it's, it's a misuse. However. Um, my, I was figured that I was going to have to be the only one out there holding the torch of this because science was lagging so far behind. But now there's um, some quite exciting changes happening, like I mm -hmm. said. And um, my, my course, I have about five different paths opening up for me at once right now. So I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to go down. But having used my emotional system to guide me, and I trust it profoundly, um, well, I can say he's really wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> but when I went down to the first ever um, convention on emotional intelligence last spring, and I had sent some of my um, science writings to some of the people that were going to be down there, and um, much to my surprise and delight, uh, some of the most impressive um, top of the field people in that are starting a, a movement in positive psychology mm -hmm. were very excited about these ideas, and uh, they want me to come in as uh, uh, maybe an outsider going to be an insider. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I really want to be an insider, but I've been invited to participate in um, research models that are, that are beginning to pull some of these ideas together and, mm -hmm. and to help hopefully speed that up. So to the degree that I can um, have influence in this positive psychology movement, that would probably be um, my highest goal in terms of legitimizing these ideas for those people who like to call up on the phone mm -hmm. and say, what are your credentials? And in fact, when I told that person that this person had invited me, they said, and his name is Martin Seligman. He's the former mm -hmm. um, head of the American Psychological Association, who's like, if there's anybody who's an authority on psychology, he's it. Yeah, and he, it. And, I, and, and she said, he is interested in talking to you? And it was really funny. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that is the level of, of um, interest and it's real exciting because of course I've been trying to share these ideas with people for a long long time and everyone's on their own little course and no one's really talking to each other or pulling all the strands together and someone like him had the breadth to see it and and he wants me to be, and so if I can help them 
get these ideas out there in a, in a more a faster pace than they are, then I'll be real happy to participate in that. And we're going to have to quit at, at this note. We are out of time. Uh, I guess oh. this is a two-part. We will <laughs> visit with you again in a few weeks. Thank you for coming and sharing your ideas with, you, uh, with us. Oh, it's and, always uh, a pleasure. Thank we'll you. We'll see you in a few weeks again with Catherine Peels. Thank you. Yeah. And it's just me.